this lord we are gathered here to receive your holy spirit and reflect on the same words of our lord and savior jesus christ who turned the whole world to create a new era through his disciples lord we are gathered here as your disciples help us to see who we are and for what we have been formed into a believing community so that we could be an effective instruments in your loving hands in jesus name we pray amen <coughs> dearly beloved once again i greet you all in the name of the lord and savior jesus christ thank you for joining us in this morning worship service even though the days are getting hotter and hotter we thank god for protecting us giving us good health and strength so that we could bear witness to his holy name <clears throat> today we have a wonderful important topic community formation around resurrection experience as i was reflecting on this particular theme <clears throat> i knew that i had to change the one of the passages for this day so we are going to meditate on acts chapter 2 verse 42 to 47 very very important passage that we all should read memorize and act upon and plan upon now as i was reflecting on this beautiful passage <coughs> something amazing thing happened in our campus <coughs> a beehive was there for many many months and it was disturbing the children who gather for the evening tuition <coughs> uh, children were scared when one bee comes inside they'll all get up and rush here and there so the teachers had very difficult time <coughs> and we talked about it we uh, discussed it in lcc and said we should remove this uh, beehive so we called the fire station and asked them to do it they took their own time and finally they removed it <coughs> they came and with a torch burning torch they uh, killed many bees and many of them flew away and they cut the whole branch then we thought everything was solved <coughs> then the very next day <coughs> we saw dead bees all around in the campus but the next day stephen came and told us yeah there is one more behind <coughs> so we were a little upset and when came we came outside there was another big beehive hanging in one of the branches so we said we have to call again and some people said um this is we this is another beehive we had two they were able to remove only one <coughs> but i have photographs i took pictures but there was only one beehive so i was a little confused so anyway i said complain make a complaint again and ask the people to come and uh, remove the beehive <coughs> within two days they took their own time so within two days when we came out and saw there was no beehive they were really confused what happened no trace of it the whole tree is very clean no sight of bees here or any other trees there were around 60000 bees would be there oh you got the picture <laughs> okay <coughs> so then i little some uh, research on uh, the beehives and looked into internet and came up with uh, many articles and read about it and some of the researchers said that the social behavior of 
bees are extremely advanced in one of the <coughs> article that i found this is what a researcher writes about beehive bees communication complex nest construction environmental control defense and division of the labor are just some of the behaviors that honey bees have developed to exist success successfully in social colonies these fascinating behaviors make social insects in general and honey bees in particular among the most fascinating creatures on earth <clears throat> it's really amazing on one particular day we had more than it says uh, 60000 is the minimum it can go up to 2 2 and a half lakh bees it's in in a hive so within a two days all the 60000 bees shifted to another place they didn't trust us it came to know that this egmur basically people will cut another branch <laughs> where we are now <laughs> so they took two days to find another place you know that the bees are very organized uh, live in organized colony and one gives the command the all the worker bees they do the same thing and all move to another place now i was wondering what is this god is god it talking to us through this honey bees and today's topic is community formation around resurrection experience and we are called to reflect on the church the believing community that jesus has formed he foretold his own disciples i am going to build my church and he said petros you are a symbol it means rock i will build my church upon you so jesus created a new community in this world and we are going to see some of the special features of this new community and we always look to the early church as a model so what i am going to share with you from this passage is that we have 10 special features of the early church now i am not going to explain all the 10 but i going to share with you very very briefly what are the things that have to be in a vibrant church in a church where the lord wants to see his wonder working power be manifested in this world so let me begin with verse 42 there st luke <coughs> describes they that is the church they devoted themselves to the apostles teaching and the fellowship and to the breaking of the bread and the prayers so here he talks about four different things and with regard to these four different things he says they devoted themselves they were very particular about it they are very much concerned about these four things that means they gave first priority first priority to for for these things apostles teaching fellowship and then um breaking of the bread and prayers now why did why did they have to do that <coughs> first and foremost thing apostle teaching <coughs> it tells us that they need to receive authorized teaching two things i would like to share with you one <clears throat> they didn't have the bible all that they had is the old testament and that was in a big uh, leather scrolls no one can carry that and the new church they didn't have any uh, a book a scripture no all that they had is apostles for them apostles were the windows through which they can see jesus christ many of them haven't met jesus and particularly in different countries no so as they as the apostles taught about jesus christ 
people learned about Jesus Christ. So apostles were the windows to see Jesus Christ, what he did, what he taught, what was the wonderful things that he had done on earth, and why he came into this earth. The second thing is that they had to remain in apostles' teaching basically because even in the early church time, people started teaching false understanding of Jesus Christ. Even during the time of apostles, there were many independent pastors who started believing Jesus, but interpreted Jesus Christ in a wrong way. Interpreted the teach, uh, teachings of Jesus Christ in a wrong way. For example, <clears throat> from the letters of St. Paul and Peter and John, we come to know that there were one particular pastor who said Jesus did not come in human flesh. We read about that in 1st uh, John chapter 1. Let me start with the 2nd John. 2nd John chapter 7 verse 10. This is what we read. For many deceivers have gone out into the world, those who do not accept the coming of Jesus Christ in the flesh. They don't confess. They don't confess the coming of Jesus Christ in flesh. Such one is a deceiver and antichrist. So even in the time of early church, there were many antichrists. That is, they taught about Jesus Christ in a wrong way. Why did they say that? They said, this body is evil. So God couldn't have come into this human body, which is sinful, through which people commit sin. So Jesus appeared to be in flesh. That created many problems. <clears throat> so somebody asked them, what about the suffering of Jesus Christ on the cross? Did he suffer? No, 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 he didn't suffer. Then people said, that's a wrong teaching. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Secondly, there were some people who said, you don't have to believe in the Old Testament God. Because Old Testament God seems to be a very angry God full of anger. But we see Jesus Christ teaching us Father, a loving God. That was another wrong teaching. It is the same God who sent Jesus Christ into this world. So because of this false understanding, they were clinging to apostles and they were very particular about receiving the right teachment, teaching from apostles. Now, <clears throat> We all know, even today, there are many, many wrong teachings. For elderly people, you will know, <coughs> there were some pastors who said, <coughs> you don't have to take medicine. You don't have to go and see doctors. If you have sickness, just pray. God will heal you. If you go to a hospital, if you go to a doctor, you are an unbeliever. You don't have strong faith. And some of you may know about a pastor who said, you should not tie tali. So don't go to CSA church. <clears throat> there were some pastors even still now, they say, child baptism is not valid. Only if you get immersion baptism, you are saved. See, all these are wrong teachings. And another pastor, there are many now, unless you speak in tongues, you are not saved. You don't have Holy Spirit. See, these are the, some of the wrong teachings that we have even today. So we need to tarry in the teachings of the apostles. For that, we need Bible studies. In our areas, we started a Bible study and we are planning to start online Bible study. I encourage every one of you to join that because it will be easy. You can sit at your home and join us. So we, let us give importance to the teachings of 
the apostles and teachings of Jesus Christ. The second thing, fellowship. Okay, now the new community was formed. Now it broke all the existing social system. When Jesus started this church, <clears throat> people were divided into different races. People were divided into different tribes within Israelites. Now Jesus came and started a new community, bringing Jews and Gentiles together. When people got divided based on the race, now Jesus formed a new community, telling them to come together. You all become family of God. All of us have one Father, Heavenly Father. No more divisions of this world. Neither Jew nor Gentiles. No slave or master. They both can come to the altar and take part in the Holy Communion. So he, Jesus formed a new community, breaking all the social barriers that existed in the first century. And of course, we should give importance to the fe fe fellowship also. That's why we have men's fellowship, women's fellowship. I encourage you to participate in it. We were also planning to have once in a month a morning time of fellowship so that more people could participate in it. So I encourage you to participate in the area fellowship. What is so special about area fellowship is that you will have a closer fellowship. <coughs> you talk to each other. You come to know about the other family closely well. So that you can offer prayer meaningfully. See, take for example our intercessory prayer. It's all general. Very few particular special prayers. But when you meet in an area fellowship, when one person prays for the other family which is sitting there, your prayer will be a powerful one. You will be offering meaningful prayer. Suppose, the family has a child which is going to write uh, plus two exams. How will the other per person will unite in prayer? So we need to strengthen our earlier fellowship and other fellowship. The next one that we see is that they were particular in breaking the bread, that is Holy Communion service. Because they were able to be assured of the presence of Jesus Christ when they participate in the Holy Communion. They always remember the MAS event. The two people, some say they are brothers, some say husband and wife, whoever they are, they went to the village, invited someone into the house, as they were hosting him, he became the host. He took the bread that they have prepared, started lifting it there, and thank God, broke it and gave it to them. See, when the pastor does the same thing, you see the presence of Jesus Christ. That's why the church is making us to wear the dress of Jesus Christ. Why do pastors wear cassocks? They were supposed to wear it because that was the dress that Jesus wore over. So they want to see Jesus Christ. So whenever we have this Holy Community, Holy Community service, we see the presence of God. And of course, as a Jews, they were supposed to sacrifice. But at the altar, they saw the sacrifice Jesus Christ, His own flesh and blood on the altar table. So they give importance to Holy Communion. The fourth one, of course, prayer. <clears throat> yes, we have to give importance to prayer. Many a time we offer formal prayers, written prayers. Sometimes people say it meaningfully. Sometimes just the, we read it. So what is so important about prayer life is that your prayer life strengthens your relationship with God. 
It unites people. If you look at uh, Acts chapter 4 and 12, there we see how the early church gave importance. When Peter and John were arrested and they were standing before the court, the church was praying someplace. When Peter was put in prison, the church was praying in John Mark's house and they were praying. So prayer was a very powerful one. So let us also give importance to prayer. Then the other one in verse 43, <clears throat> this is what we read. And awe came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. Yes, I would like to give importance to this special feature also. Of course, Jesus always underplayed the importance of signs. We all know that. That doesn't mean we should not give importance to wonders and signs. Because in two places, in Mark chapter 16 and in Apostles chapter 12, there we see the Christians preach the word of God and God, look at the sentence, and God confirmed the teaching or the word through wonders and signs. Don't think signs will not happen in our church. Don't think wonderful things will not happen in our church. Many a time there is a blank statement. Nothing happens in CSA church. No. I won't accept that. After serving 40 years in CSI church, I know many wonders have taken place in our church. Through the women's fellowship prayer, through men's fellowship, through the prayer of the church, God did wonderful things. I'll tell you, it, it happened in a CSA church. I was conducting a Holy Communion service. It was a small church, just a table, <coughs> white cloth, I was standing behind uh, the table. As I was conducting the Holy Communion service, one person was possessed by evil spirit. And she started swaying. And immediately, people were not looking at me, looking at that old lady. And I didn't know what to do. <clears throat> and immediately, the person in charge, catechist, he stood up and uh, went to the went near the lady and uh, started praying for her and said <clears throat> what is your name <laughs> where have you come from <laughs> how did you possess then i said no no we are not supposed to ask all these questions we will just pray <clears throat> then he immediately said <clears throat> pisase po <laughs> and that lady said to my amazement now pisase le satta then only I came to know the difference between <coughs> Satan and Fisas. It says, Na Satan. <coughs> then something amazing happened. I knew that we are not supposed to have dialogue with the evil spirit. Then I was, where well, I was confused what to do, I felt something surrounding me. It was more like a fire-like or a slight vibration. <clears throat> As if uh, a mild shock is going, the electricity is passing through my whole body. Then I realized the presence of God and said, That's all I said. In the name of Jesus, get out. Immediately that old lady fell down and they sprinkled water on her and she got up and participated in the worship service. Afterwards, she took baptism along with her family. See, wonders and signs happen in our church too. And God strengthens the church, but all, He also enables the other people to know that living God is working in the church. Let me move fast. <clears throat> the other thing that we see is that 
in verse 44, they were sharing things, the resources with other people. Yes, Jesus gave importance to sharing with the poor people. So the church also sincerely obeyed its master and started sharing. And as we read that, some people sold the property, it seems. Now we come to know that they did it because Jesus, they thought Jesus would come in their own lifetime. If Jesus comes in their own life, lifetime, why do we need the property? So let's sell it and share it with all the other members. So they did that. But later on they came to know that only Father God knows the date. So they said, they changed the uh, strategy and said, okay, let's keep the property, but give generously to the other people. So they shared the wealth with the unfortunate one. Now we know that we give generously and part of it goes to outreach ministry and part of it goes to the maintenance of this church. Especially I thank you all for generously contributing for the work that we do with regard to the doors and windows and we are starting repairing the roof but um, I came to know that we know we need more funds so I encourage you to give liberally because God has given us much and from what God has given us we share it with the church so they shared the resources with other people to the to building to build the church the other one that we see is that <clears throat> in verse 46 and day by day attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes they receive their food with glad and generous heart praising god i'll come to that level verse uh, 47 also here we see two things. One, <clears throat> they gave importance to corporate worship. When Sunday comes, we have to be in the church. Unless you are sick or unless you are on a journey. Otherwise, God expects each and every one of us to come here and worship together. And even though they found a new community, Christian community, they were, uh, they were going to Jerusalem temple daily for two reasons. One, <clears throat> it's the same God. They are, not, they are not started worshipping a new God. We are not worshipping new God. We are worshipping the same God who created the whole world. A God who created India too. The God who sustained Indians also. So it's the same God. So the unity or the oneness of God will enable them to come together, gather in the temple. At the same time, that was an opportunity for them to share the word of God with other people. What God has done through Jesus Christ to other people. So that's why they gave importance to corporate worship. Let us also give, do the same. The next one is that they gathered in houses and had the communion service. They didn't have church, so they gathered in houses and had a communion service. Now, with regard to this communion service, I would like to share that it was not the little wafer and little bit of wine that they shared. At that time, it was full meal. Full meal. <clears throat> the family that host made dinner and people gathered and they had a full meal and in that meal they took two items in the menu that is a bread and wine they blessed it as a symbol of body and blood of Jesus Christ and shared it with everybody for them that Holy Communion service at home brought a closer fellowship, brought each and every one of them closer to each other. Now, when we come here, 
let us also realize that through participating in the holy communion we are coming together as one family and many time church didn't learn this message or many time they had some practices that were against this particular truth that is god is bringing us together as one family and particularly in india missionaries had very tough time in conveying this message that unity in jesus christ you know about the caste system that we have so initially they said we will have a wall at the center of the church the upper caste people on one side <coughs> the lower one on the other side yes they had walls in tamil nadu then missionary said no this is wrong say they broke the wall <coughs> then they decided let's have two cups of course we have individual cups in anglican church and other churches they had single cup <coughs> but they said we should have two cups one for the upper caste another one for the lower caste then the missionary was i said no this is wrong <coughs> then they said let's have one cup but we will take first i'm sharing this just to tell you how the missionaries had a tough time in bringing people together in india helping them to understand that we are one family one family to brothers and sisters in christ through participating in the holy communion and the fellowship meal god built a church of people who have come together and had family relationship then <coughs> finally we see how <coughs> the church made an impact with the public there we read in verse 47 praising god and having favor with all people now here i would say <coughs> we fail miserably not just as this church all churches or particularly the csi <coughs> and that includes pastors also we also haven't realized it missionaries have done it they fulfilled this particular feature that is they had a good relationship with other people non christians my first posing is arakonam <coughs> there they used to say a missionary reverend shaw used to visit houses of non christians and pray for them also he had a very close relationship with the local mla mps he had a good relationship with other people <coughs> so much so he used to invite them for the christmas uh, celebration the non christians used to come now let's think about our church <coughs> how is our relationship with the people who are living the same road aragapar road do we have contact with them do we talk to them if something happens in our church is it possible for us to invite them and help them to know the gospel and have a experience that there is a loving people worshiping in wesley church here in egmo let's think about that also the last one is that <clears throat> and the lord added their number day by day those who are being saved that is they were conducting baptism service every day what's happening to our church any church in cs they say in chennai <coughs> church growth is tremendous but the sad part is how are we going and uh, growing one <coughs> way of growing the growth in our chennai is that the church growth by birth people get married and bigger children 
and we baptize them. So through child baptism, the church grows in Chennai. <coughs> then the second reason is vocational or professional. People who are living, got educated in somewhere, or Tirnilbeli or Salem or any other place, they move to Chennai, become members of the church in Chennai. That's why the number in Chennai church is growing. The third one is real conversion. How many adult baptism have taken place in this church? There are few. But the sad part is they become member because they want to get married <laughs> to a Christian. But what are we doing about this? Let's ponder upon all these things. Let's study this passage diligently. You go home, think about all these 10 features. Anyway, we will be sending the outline of the sermon to everyone. Think about it. If you feel that we have to do certain things based on these 10 features, write it down and give it to us. We will publish it in the steeple. Let's keep a moment of silence. <clears throat> Loving God, Lord, we thank you for this beautiful passage through which we come to know how the early church functioned, how they were vibrant, how they devoted themselves to many of the things that we have pondered on this day. Yes, Lord, you formed a new community. You want us to be powerful people doing your work so that your name be glorified through this church or the churches in this world, particularly in Chennai. Lord, help us to ponder upon the special features of a living church so that even through our church, we may glorify your holy name by devoting ourselves in all these 10 features, 10 activities, so that your name be glorified through our church too, O oh Lord. O oh Holy Spirit, we humbly ask you to empower us, O oh Lord. Lord, we are not here to just maintain the old traditional way of functioning. Yes, we have a rich tradition, but at the same time, Lord, help us to update the church to our situation. Apply these things that we have learned from the early church to our church here in this place so that our church could be a vibrant church. Glorifying your holy name in this place. Reaching out to the other people who are living around us not many a time we just come here, worship you and go back. No impact on the other people living around us. Lord, help us to do it through various ministries. Especially at this time we think of the summer camp that we are going to have for the children. Lord, let the children who live in this road, in Alagapa Road, to come and join us, not just our own children in Santosh Naga, so that we will have an impact in the society too. Lord, we commit ourselves to your loving hands, having realized how a model church should be, we surrender ourselves to be part of this vibrant church that we have in this Egmo, in this place. Lord, continue to be with us and uphold us and use us as your powerful instruments. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.